Breast cancer is a top cancer in women, both in the developing world as well as in the developed world. Although some risk reduction might be achieved with prevention, these strategies cannot eliminate the majority of breast cancer. In low-income and middle-income countries, where breast cancer is detected at very late stages. The highest proportion of breast cancer survivors still alive after five years of diagnosis is in Northern America and Europe, and the lowest incidence in Asia and Africa. Therefore, early detection in order to improve breast cancer outcome remains the cornerstone of breast cancer control. Today we have two amazing women who are going to educate you about breast cancer. Thank you, Dr. Vindya and Ruth for being here with us today. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, breast cancer um, and uh, hopefully by the end of this, we want to make sure that people are aware of what breast cancer is and also the importance of early detection because that mm -hmm. is one of the most important ways of um, you know avoiding avoiding it to get to such a such a yes. bad stage, right? So can you just tell us about cancer? Cancer is an abnormal growth uh, of tissue. It can be any, um, any tissue. Since we are talking about breast, breast tissue, when they form not normal cells, uh, we call it breast cancer. And uh, it can form in the breast ducts or on the lobules. Depending on that, uh, the, in clinically we name it as ductal or lobular cancer. Um, many women do have lumps in the breast, um, which is normal in anybody who is in their menarche. You had uh, Menarche in your 14, uh, 15 years of age, up to 45, you are having your menstrual cycle yeah. regularly. So you, your ducts, um, cells will become uh, bigger uh, in your menstrual cycle. That's why many women have breast tenderness, um, pain when in their menstrual cycle. When the menstrual cycle is finished, it goes back to normal. So I want you to understand the breast goes through hormonal change all the time. So anything which goes through hormonal change all the time do have a tendency to form abnormal cells. Okay? Yeah. yeah. I okay. hope I understand. Yeah, I think that uh, something very interesting that I didn't know about. Um, and uh, the, my next question is, um, can you inherit breast cancer? Because I, I've read that about 5 to 10% of people who have breast cancers inherit it. Yes, because uh, it's like um, diabetes. You see, if you have a first kin, who's having the same uh, condition, uh, there are certain genes which is called BRC1, BRCA2. Uh, those are family inherited genes. They have a tendency to change when you age. Mm -hmm. So a person who's having a family history of cancer do have a tendency to get cancer in the near future. So it's not a hard and fast rule everybody who has uh, cancer in their family would get it but it's uh, it's a possibility so being intelligent would be you screen yourself because this is avoidable and treatable early detection cures yeah, yeah. okay um so you know for for those people i mean i'm sure it's not uh um, it's not something feasible to keep going to the hospital like every week or every two weeks, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm sure cancer cells grow very fast, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think that there are some home detection tests that you can do yourself. So can you elaborate, you know, on what, what sort of tests you can do on yourself and what are some signs that women should be looking, um, looking at? when they're, um, uh, you know, when they're, when they're checking themselves. What, what sort of things should they, they be? Okay, it's very easy. 
you know you always go to take bath yeah, yeah. or you are you're not very good with that you can take one minute of your day to examine your breast mm -hmm. it's not very hard no you know women they always tell we are very busy we don't have time so while you are taking bath while you are soaping yourself you can take your three fingers and palpate your breast right. with the, your head hands behind your head right. like you are examining your one side of the breast right. that particular side hand you touch your head so that it will fix the breast yeah. uh, because breast is only a pad of fat mm -hmm. so when you do this it fixes mm -hmm. then you can easily palpate yourself and right. see if there there is any lumps it right. is very hard right. it is hard like this or hard like wood is it moving yeah that's everybody can do right. and you you have a mirror uh, in front of you you can look at your breast either side and see is the two sides are the same is it one which is something I didn't see before today I see something different the color the skin how it is uh, is it like an orange if it is orange it is not normal yeah things like that how is your areola uh, the nipple area is it red it is producing any discharge right do you when you touch do you have pain right. those are simple things right. you can you know detect and the minute you see those kind of things you can yeah. go to a doctor yeah. see whether it is hormonal uh, or something really you need to check on because i remember when i was in university they had we we would share bathrooms so they would have the charts in the bathroom mm -hmm. to sort of sort of show you you know the How what things do. you should be looking for and i think you're right that you know women should take a few minutes of their day uh, because again you detect early and you know you find something weird going on with your body I think everybody is in tune with their body mm -hmm. and if you start finding that there's something weird you should definitely go in and get a screening done yes. right yeah. but how often would you should you go to a doctor to get your screening done like if you know uh, that you have a family history you are um, in your age group like over 40 years of age we always ask they have higher risk of getting cancer right. but it does not it's not a hard and fast mm -hmm. rule if you have any risk uh, factors in your in your list right. you are smoking you are having um, less uh, movement no activity no exercise you're obese you are diet is not very good or it's more vitamins you are taking you are not having a balanced diet mm -hmm. uh, and you are in your menstrual i mean uh, reproductive age or you have um, in with the genes you have bigger breast mass you know some families they have uh, higher bigger breast density yeah. so then it's very difficult even to detect right so yeah. when you have those kind of risk factors it's better at least you check yourself every yearly yeah. because breast cancer is very fast growing and it will harm you if you can detect it very early you're better off right because you can save your life yeah. otherwise um, these uh, you see these are lymph ducts right the minute you have something growing and which is spreading it will go to the lymph nodes and it's and also uh, spread across other parts of the other body, parts right? of the when body very yeah. fast so you'll get multiple organ um, involvement right. which is very difficult to treat right so again, just early detection is, is very, very important. Very, very important. And so for, let's say, um, you know, if, if my mom had breast cancer, what age would you, would, you, uh, would you suggest that a child 
should come in to get um, screened? Uh, your age, I think uh, you should start from 25 years and above. No, I, why I'm asking this is because, you know, the more you, like when you read the news, mm -hmm. it's alarming at how now it's getting younger and younger. That, yes. that just children are getting, and you know, this whole 40 thing, I've read it so many places and you know, this whole figure in people's head that, oh no, I can wait until 40. But uh, I think you're so right, if, especially if you're at high risk, mm -hmm. then definitely you have to go. Because it's, uh, you know, we are very stereotypic uh, when you read in books. Yeah. If the book has said yeah. uh, it's 40, you yeah. do not think there is a possibility uh, I could be over one or one in thousand yeah. or yeah. one in How hundred. How can I be the statistic? Yes. Yeah. So why not check yourself? Because it's hardly a big thing to do. Mm -hmm. If you really... Because you cannot, your hormones always change. You get a cyclical hormone change every month. Right. So how could you say that you will wait till 40 years? Yeah. And I, I have a question, you know, just, you know, the, for, for a lot of girls who maybe they have very irregular periods mm. until they're older, are they at a higher risk of getting cancer? Is there any correlation? Yes, if, uh, okay, the uh, studies say when you have higher insulin levels, uh, right. people who have a higher insulin levels have higher estrogens levels in the body and they have a higher risk for developing breast right. cancer. And uh, the same goes to your abdominal grip, you know, you will become more fatter. Uh, your um, estrogen levels go high. Yeah. So, um, you know, I have a lot of patients who will come and tell my breast is, I'm not, bre my child is uh, four years old, my breast is having breast milk. Yeah, there are a lot of, because the food we eat had changed, the lifestyle had changed, so if you when i when every time i check their prolactin level it's high yeah so the clock doesn't work like the the olden days right right i think also now i wish this moves on to lifestyle change mm -hmm. you know and basically you know that um, you know i read somewhere that uh, obviously in in developed countries the risk of breast cancer not the risk only but Breast cancer statistics are much lower mm -hmm. than in developing countries for multiple reasons. You know, um, your diet, the fact that, you know, you don't have so much uh, um, knowledge about exercise mm -hmm. and how it influences these hormones. Or, you know, even you don't have the facilities or the knowledge. Like right now we're educating people because I'm sure a lot of people don't even know that you can check yourself. Mm -hmm. for these things. Yeah. So lack of knowledge and, and, and education about these things. So um, a lot of people in developing countries uh, are, are suffering from from uh, breast cancer mm -hmm. and then also their their um, ability to, to, to live longer is you know minimized, is minimized because of it. Mm -hmm. So can you can you elaborate on this and how it, uh, it has to do with lifestyle because I think people do not want to believe that a bad diet, lack of exercise, you know, I think that you see the, I've done a lot of shows on health. A lot of people believe that if you're skinny, you're healthy. you are fine, you're healthy. Oh, no, no, no. But, you know, I, I have a good figure or I have a good body. Um, you know, you're, you know, it's it's fine. I'm, I'm healthy. And then they will eat the, the, the junk, the junk of the junk, you know. Uh, I don't think there's a correlation between weight and health, first of all, I really don't. Yes, at sometimes there is a correlation, but in a lot of times I've seen, it's all about met met metabolism as well, you know, and also, again, about genes. If, if your family is thin, it's possible that you are also going to be thin, you yes, know? Yes, yes. Um, so can you elaborate a little bit on your lifestyle, your health, the need of exercise for these things? You see, it has the... We 
again we are going back to perceptions of people eh? yeah normally if your parents are small built you will be right. small built right. very rarely uh, unless and until you you had uh, any hormonal imbalance mm -hmm. drastically uh, you'll become fat uh, or yes uh, the other reason if somebody is using uh, contraceptives right. they put on weight uh, but in general you are supposed to have a healthy diet a balanced diet because our diet at the moment uh, is not balanced if you take most of the food you eat is uh, fatty and uh, and the m many people who have uh, smaller figures or uh, the minute they become a little bit obese they start uh, taking uh, weight lossing pills yeah. and uh, you know all yeah. those things yes, yes. and uh, you concentrate you keep treatment to your body uh, people do funny yeah. things uh, why not avoid that and you know another very funny and i want to talk about the culture here because um i think people have this notion that barbecue chicken is, it's okay. It's grilled. It's, I mean, it's, you know, okay. it's barbecued. It's fine. It's not okay because that is actually barbecued chicken is one of those things that can increase your risks of getting cancer if you're eating it too much, right? Yes, because you know? uh, and the amount of sugar it goes in because uh, barbecue sauce is mostly the more flavor you get, you, you put molasses and sugar. Yeah. So practically you're thinking, oh, it's grilled yeah nothing is there yeah. but you get a lot of fat on top and yeah. of course sugar even the 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 sugar right your supplement sugar you use right. more if you use anything more for a long time it is not good because uh, it is uh, like the sweetener for example yeah. Uh, it takes your liver takes more effort to metabolize it right. and uh, it's better you take normal sugar and have a healthy life then you're going for it it's you're going for this uh, sweetness yeah. the same goes to butter people think if you have pure butter is bad for you but nowadays science tells us the fortified acids they are not good because the margarines you have uh, you think ah, it is okay for me but no it is not no. it's better you have a little bit, bit of natural thing yeah. you will have a longer life yeah. now we do not uh, compare lifestyles of different countries why do the Chinese and the, the Japanese people live longer because they have boiled food. Yeah. I agree with you completely. So they don't have the problems you yeah. we And have. also uh, another thing from, from one of the diet and health shows that I think it's so important to repeat here is that a lot of the, a lot of the food that is cooked is so overcooked mm -hmm. that especially the vegetables that all the nutrients are gone yes so you're basically eating what something that's not benefiting you mm -hmm. so half cook them and eat them or yeah. or you know eat them raw because that way you will get all the nutrients from 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 the food right that's why the if you see the japanese or chinese uh, yeah. cooking they are blanched yeah. or steamed exactly they are not cooked Right, uh, right. Okay. What can we do to minim minimize the risk of getting? I know that we've repeated this quite a bit. Like, well, what can we do to minimize the risk of getting breast cancer? And I have a few statistics here. You know, um, that preventability estimates show that about twenty-two percent of cases of breast cancer in Brazil um, can be prevented by not drinking alcohol. Uh, being physically active and maintaining a healthy lifestyle and I brought statistics so people know this is not made up figures this not is it. based on data mm -hmm. um, also physical activity um, that this is by the uh, women's health initiative 
They say that as little as an hour and a half to two and a half hours a week of brisk walking mm-hmm. reduced a woman's risk uh, of breast cancer by 18%. Mm-hmm. And walking 10 hours a week reduced it even more. Even more. You know? So um, this is just to sort of uh, emphasize that these are based on statistics. Mm-hmm. So it's important there is a correlation between lifestyle, diet, health, and exercise, right? And, and yeah. Um, And to not to prevent, but to just lower your risks or your risk of getting cancer, you should just keep these things in mind. You know, the, the thing is when people talk about cancer, they think, oh, the end of the world. It is not the end of the world. It's about the attitude, how you, yeah. how you face it. Um, you cannot predict what will happen tomorrow, can we? No, you can't. So, Why can't we do what is necessary? Because it's like uh, you, your body is just like a car. If you maintain it properly, it will mm-hmm. give yeah. you a long more mileage. mileage. Yeah. Yeah. That's why any, anybody who uses a car, 5,000 kilometers, you go and do service. Because otherwise it will break down. I agree with you. So if take that service as screening. Mm-hmm. You know that you have certain risk factors. I have family history. I have uh, this. I I am this much old, and I need to do one, two, three. Mm-hmm. It's really. one day you yeah. come do it. You know, I think, um, and and I'm just trying to see it from a another point of view. Is that I think people have fear that if they go, they what might, if? Yeah, what if they go and they find something they don't like? But Again, it goes back to the point that early detection. Would you rather go when you're at that state, state where they have to do such inv- in, invasive, invasive stuff to you? Radical. Right, you know, rather than you go early and you find out you have it and, you know, you, you sort of detect it and you can move on with your life, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, um, Dr. Vindya, thank you so much for talking about the, the, you know, all the touching on such important parts on... you know, breast cancer and, um, you know, giving us statistics and giving us the important information to, to sort of uh, about early detection and, and things like that. I want to talk a little bit about t- uh, treatment, mm-hmm. you know, um, what tests can be done to determine if one has cancer and, and how often should these tests be done? Okay, Any, anybody who like you want to come and check. yourself yeah. for breast cancer yeah. <laughs> say you have a you found a lump okay you did self-examination in the bathroom you find a small lump you come to a doctor yeah. the first thing we tell you yeah. is okay we examine you then we find a small lump mm-hmm. uh, we check whether it is moving or not right. it is rigid then uh, we ask you to do a simple breast ultrasound And uh, you can compare the ultrasound with the mammogram also. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, Ruth would talk about yeah. the yeah. mammogram and yeah. uh, ultrasound. So, so, so Ruth, who would qualify for this mammograph and, and ultrasound? I think she's answered most of that. But yeah. um, okay, after the patient comes to you, what, what would you do? Okay. If the patient comes from the doctor, the doctor have examined the patient and felt that there is a lump. And the doctor will request this special person to do mammography. Yeah. Then patient will come to radiology department and we are going to do mammography. And now what is a mammography? Mm-hmm. Mammography is a X-ray procedure which uses a special ma- machine called mammography. Mm-hmm. And that machine is used only to examine the breast. It's a machine which uses X-ray but even a very low dose. Most women, when they heard about X-ray, then X-ray being radiated to your chest, to your, mammo- to your breast, they get feared. Mm-hmm. But mammography is a special machine only for doing the breast examination. So it uses a very low dose just to see the breast. And you know the breast is just a soft tissue. Yeah. Not, there is no bone in the breast. Yeah. So you use a very low dose to examine the breast of a woman. Yeah. So we will do the, the examination. And then we get out the film, which looks like this. Right. This is the image after we do mammography. This is the image that we get. 
Now this image will be interpreted by the doctor, the radiologist, and suppose there was a lump that the doctor has felt when palpating. The lump will show here. Then the radiologists are the doctors who are specialized to tell whether this lesion is cancer or not. Okay, from the mammography they can tell? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then what, what is, um, then the next step would be to do a, to, to biopsy, right? Yes, I do okay. a biopsy, um, depending on... Uh, to know if no, it's, it's malignant, malignant or not, not maybe? Uh, or the staging. You take a biopsy and see which kind of uh, cells it right. is from ducts or it is from the lobules. Normally, ductal carcinoma, it's, it's very uh, fast spread. So, your treatment modality depends on the biopsy results. Right. And uh, you detect where whether your lymph nodes are, uh, which area of the yeah. breast uh, is involved. And uh, if you see the lymph uh, yeah. while examining your lymph node, uh, below the axilla is uh, enlarged, so you are a candidate for a mastectomy, yeah. a radical mastectomy with uh, all the, the new nodes uh, right. removal. Do you know anything about these genetic tests that people do? Um, I, I've read a lot about these gene tests that you can do to, I, I, I don't know, I'm just asking mm. that, uh, that um, and it's becoming very popular in, in the West. Uh, I don't know about the authenticity of it. Uh, as a doctor, I think you have more knowledge on that. But uh, what, what do you have to say about that? Gene test, okay. Um, well, it gives you... Um, practically, uh, our whole um, physical uh, body is mapped yeah. by genetics. Mm -hmm. And uh, so somebody's aging time can be detected. Yeah. So we have something called cell division, okay. where you, uh, you, if you sleep at night, mm -hmm. in the morning this upper layer will be t taken off and a new layer will come. We do, we do not see it, but it is happening every day. Yeah. And we have... Uh, markers i mean to check detect the cell i'm going to produce is going to be like this mm -hmm. and it's being checked every day it's like a production line you yeah. have a quality control uh, now when you age that quality control um, gets a little bit yeah. deranged yeah. so that can be detected by genes right we have something called telomeres. Mm -hmm. In a cell, when we take cell division, telomeres are the ones which detect aging. Mm -hmm. So, a typical certain family may have. I'll give you an example. Make it uh, you know not complicated. Um, you find two people who are in the same age, but when you look at them they look different. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. You have seen that? Yeah. So that is the genetic lineage of that particular person. Mm -hmm. okay. So it does have a, you know, you can predict what is going to happen in there. Right. That's why people nowadays, uh, even though this is not related to that, uh, uh, they, do cord banking. When a child is born, right. the child's cord is banked. Right. So, because uh, the, the cells which are in the cord, they are undifferentiated cells. There are a lot of experiments which are going on about cell um, gene therapy. So, you need to, you are unique in your genetic profile. In the near future, say when you're 18 and above years of age, you need those, the initial building blocks. You have it saved. Right. right. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's very interesting. <laughs> very, very, very interesting. Um, so just to go back to the mammography, um, mm-hmm. I just, you know, I think a lot of people are very scared to do it because they believe that maybe the rays can affect them or there's some sort of rays in the mammography. Can you just uh, elaborate on this? Okay. It's true that we are using X radiation, that's called X rays, <clears throat> but the dose is just very small and calculated only for breast. Right. So the machine, we cannot use the same machine taking, let's say, chest X ray. No. I'll give you the dose we are using like 25 kilo voltage. That is right. very minimal. While if you want to take a chest X ray, for example, you use 67 up to 70 kV. Yeah. That is very high. So this machine uses very low dose of radiation to examine the breast. Okay. So women should not be scared that uh, they are going to get radiation. And later and on you will show us around. Yeah, I'll show the mammography. I think yeah. when people visually see these things, it puts them at ease. Um, yeah. yeah, and uh, especially talking about it also, yeah. because yeah. Uh, a lot of my patients who will come and ask, uh, Dr. Uh, will I get pain? Mm. Are they going to crush Please my breast? Yeah. Uh, this is something yeah. I'm being asked. So yeah. I have to always assure them, yeah. but still, they you know, it's scared. the perception of people. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever they come to radiology, they used to ask the same question. Yes. Are you going to squeeze my breast so much? No. Yeah. You know, you're in putting the back, your breast yeah. into a machine. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. idea. People come there. So they come yeah. there already, they are scared. Yeah. You see, uh, in, in the back years, they have the uh, analog machine. So I think that time they use they have to squeeze. Course, but yeah. nowadays you have a digital machine, yeah. more computerized. Well, you yeah. don't need to squeeze the breast of a woman so much. Yeah. I'll show you when you go and to see the yeah, X-ray. And I and think it. this will take away a lot of the, the fear. fear you know? yeah. Fear is one thing that causes people to not want to even mm. dwell or think or even uh, uh, you know come to a hospital and this is not only um, I'm not saying people are uneducated I'm saying everybody you know if you have a fear in your heart for anything you will not you will just uh, want to ignore it you and know? you'll find mm-hmm. an excuse for to everything uh, yeah. exactly you'll find no not today I had yeah. you will even you'll lie to your own self yeah actually. and I think you when we were speaking earlier you said such a perfect thing you said Make it like you're going to a dentist. Yes. Every, you know, every, whatever, few months, every year, go and get yourself checked and screened just to avoid, you know, uh, uh, later, I mean, again, early detection because mm-hmm. later you don't want to come up with an even bigger issue, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, mammography yeah. can pick the lesion. Sometimes a woman will not feel a lesion. Neither the doctor may not we feel may the not lesion. Feel. But when ah. they come to mammography, We can pick a lesion very small that right. can be shown up two years later. Yes. But mammo, if you do mammography, you don't yeah. feel anything, you don't feel yeah. any lump. But if you have a small lesion, that cannot be touched by the doctor or yourself. Right. The mammography machine will yeah. pick it up. Which is also important that, yes, while home detection tests are important, it's also important to get yourself screened yeah, by yeah, a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Even right? though you don't feel any lesion, you don't see right. any changes, it's very important to do mammography. I agree. Yeah. I agree with you. Um, I want to talk, touch just a little bit on the on the emotional side of, of this whole thing. You know, I think we're, 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 we talked a lot about the medical mm. thing of it, but again, you know, we're all humans. And I think that when somebody tells you that, uh, or, or, or a doctor t- diagnoses you with breast cancer, um, I think it, it's a big hit on the person, mm-hmm. um, on the family, mm-hmm. you know, so... In, in what sort of advice do you have for people who might know or might find out that they have breast cancer and what sort of what do you advise the family should do you see we are all human beings right um you you will see you will hear you will you may be quite educated but in the end of the day you yeah. are just another human, human yeah. being yeah. and uh, you know even if you take uh you get sick with flu, you are not happy. Of course. Yeah? So imagine somebody is detected breast cancer because with the, uh, the media and publicity, you think, oh my God, my life is at the end. 
And women, practically, they start thinking about, you know, what will happen to my family, what will happen to... And uh, most of the times, the families, uh, women, many majority, uh, they are in, they are not very supportive either. Most of the time, they may not have anybody to talk to. Uh, they come do the um, mammogram and found out you don't have you need somebody to talk to about your problem right. and uh, invest there are psychiatrists where you could yeah. go and make an appointment and somebody to talk to yeah. but even on I was checking online there's forums now Mm -hmm. Because breast cancer has become such a, it, it's not like a big, it's not a big problem I'm mm -hmm. saying, but it's become such a Aware, awareness thing. Yeah, awareness mm -hmm. campaign and that, that people in the world are supporting each other. So I guess visit those forums as well, you know, to just sort of get that support. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, uh, while discussing these issues yeah. openly, Somebody who may think, oh, oh I, I have something I should not tell anybody because uh, that fear factor also would go yeah. away because at a um, point of time, we may have to face it. Of course. And uh, I think the family and the doctor also need to talk. Uh, in a, a doctor in a developing country has more roles to play than a doctor in a uh, yeah. developed world because uh, you have to be the counselor and uh, everything Support in the end of the everything. everything. Yeah. So even to get the treatment plan and affordability, where to go, those are also a, a yeah. problem which. Uh, there, there, I have some families who would come and tell, okay, we don't have uh, ability to uh, take her anywhere. Yeah. So you are left with options, yeah. um, limited options to do. So then maybe we need to talk about how to support somebody detects cancer, where to go, what to do. Yeah how much the cost will be right. yeah so those uh, things maybe we yeah. as doctors we may have to tell all the hospitals need to have that proper information yeah. because uh, majority of the people they think okay you get mastectomy that's done but that is not the end of it you need no. to have follow-up which many people do not no, do, do yeah. not have because I have uh, my bre bre best friend's uh, mother, she passed away. She had uh, both sides, uh, radical mastectomy. And uh, she didn't do follow-up afterwards. Five years later and down the lane, she developed. So people's awareness, the, even the family support, if there was somebody who will go, no, you have to go check. Somebody needs to tell you to do it. Yes, yeah. because that support is very necessary. Many women, they do not go to the hospital alone. Yeah. And after a certain age, you are reluctant. Yeah. So that push from the family is necessary. Yeah. And I think the family, do majority of society, do not have the knowledge about it. So I think their perception is less. So maybe if we talk about it a little bit more. And I think family support is so vital because a member of my family went through it. I remember that every time she would go do a mammogram, it's that fear and that, oh my God, what if what if it happens again but if you have somebody there mm -hmm. you know just to you know that person can just be there to talk to you to make you feel better to just say i'm here you know whatever happens i'm here for you to to discuss you know what you're feeling mm -hmm. i think that can just do so much for a person um and again just that person to push you to be like look it's been a year let's go do another mm -hmm. another mammograph yeah. right yeah um, and you know it was so alarming when I was doing research online that 
you know, people think that breast cancer, oh, there's so many people in America or in the West that have it. It's because there's so much information and there's so much statistics out there, right? Mm-hmm. In, I could not find, I'm not any, joking, any in Africa. My, the last statistic I found was in 2012 and I didn't even want to include it because it was in four years ago. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So um, there's this, I think everything starts with awareness. You know, action plan con- goes next. But the first thing that you need to do is to make people aware that, look, that this thing exists. Number one, you can do things at home to help yourself. If you feel anything weird, make sure you're going for for, for, for um, checkup Check daily. Up. Mm-hmm. You know, make sure you're living a, a sort of um, yeah, healthy, healthy, balanced lifestyle. Do your exercise and avoid indulging in, in too much alcohol or, you know, smoking, smoking. Yeah. you know, and and, uh, and like you said, maintain your body, you know, and uh, hopefully it will decrease your chances of, of these things. To say, add to something. As women, huh, we need to <coughs> love ourselves. Yeah. If you love yourself, you would be able to love somebody else. Yeah. So... If you don't look after yourself, yeah. the whole, you know, a woman is considered the, the main frame of the family. Yeah. So everything falls down. Yeah. So that's a responsibility. Value yourself, yeah. right? And I think that this was such an amazing way to end this because um, Um, I, I do a women empowerment show mm-hmm. and for a woman, a doctor as, as, as highly qualified professionals to come and say this, I think that women need to know that it's mm-hmm. so important to value self, give time to yourself. You mm-hmm. know, sometimes I think a lot of women get so caught up in their daily lives, their kids, you know, their husband, their, their business, whatever they're doing, you know, that they forget to take care of their own, own mm-hmm. selves and then... That's how their health deteriorates, right? You can ask uh, generally, randomly people. Right. How many times, what time do you take your breakfast or lunch? Yeah. They'll tell, oh, I'm uh, busy with my kids, so I'll take my uh, breakfast and lunch together somewhere around 12. Yeah. Or you'll have one meal. No, but this is one thing I've learned and I'm not joking from, I'm, I'm being extremely serious from speaking to you guys because I think that I overburdened myself and I, I've, I think for the past three months I've not taken a weekend off because of just, you know, sometimes I think that work takes over your life and yes, I love mm-hmm. my work, I love everything I do, but you have to take time because I don't eat breakfast in the morning, I rush out the door. I have a cup of coffee. It's so you could I could I feel physically sick because of the coffee. You know, mm-hmm. it's so bad for you. And yet I continue to do it. So um, as as you know, I and I and, and I like to be uh, very honest because you know, maybe people think I have this perfect, you know, that I work and I have my breakfast and I don't and I've learned to take mm-hmm. care of yourself mm-hmm. because you only have you. You know, yes. you have only one body and one chance. So take care of your body. Right. And it's very expensive when, uh, if you're sick, of it course. is very expensive. Yeah, Most true. expensive bed in the world is hospital bed. I agree. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's a good doctor quote. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you completely. So yes. you take care of yourself. Yes. So thank you so much. You know, I learned so much, not only about breast cancer, but just about lifestyle change and again, how to value yourself as, as a woman. Um, and I really hope this, this, this video is able to um, educate all of the women out there and to, you know, make sure that they are doing these tests and detecting them, the, these cancers earlier so that they don't need to go through you know, all these other issues. So thank you so much for thank taking you. your time. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. This is a mammography machine. Eh? ni mashine ambayo yanatumika kupima matiti kwa kina mama pale ambapo tunataka kuangalia kama mama ana kansa ya matiti au la hii mashine inaweza ikapanda juu kutokana na uheiti ya mtu na inaweza ikashuka chini kutokana na kimo cha mtu anayefanyiwa kipimo mama mwenye ambaye tunatakiwa kufanyia kipimo atasimama mbele ya mashine alafu tutaweka ziwa lake hapa alafu tutashusha hii plate 
taratibu wala haiwezi kumuumiza mgonjwa kwa sababu watu wengi wanaogopa sana kwamba ziwa la mama litakuwa limesqueezed sana akasikia maumivu sio hivyo mashine itashusha kidogo mpaka ishike lile ziwa liwe tight alafu tunaenda ku expose pale tunapata image kwa ajili ya kuangalia hili ziwa la mama kwa ndani na tunafanya mara mbili ukishapima mama wakati amesimama hivi vile vile tunageuza hii mashine ili tuangalie upande wa pili wa ziwa la mama na kuangalia upande wa kwapa ambapo mara nyingi kama mgonjwa ana kansa basi zile lymph nodes zinaweza zikawa zimekuwa affected kwa hiyo mashine itageuzwa hivi utamweka mama hapa alafu utashika ziwa lake sio kulibana mpaka mama asikie maumivu unalishika kidogo tu liwe 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 tight kidogo ili mionzi iweze kupita kwa uraisi na ili utumie dozi ndogo kwa sababu usipoligaramiza ili ziwa likawa na thickness kubwa ina maana utatumia mionzi mingi na hii mashine inatakiwa utumie mionzi midogo kwa sababu pia ni sehemu ya kifua si vizuri patumike mionzi mingi kwa hiyo tuna squeeze unatumia dozi ndogo kabisa ili kupata hiyo image sasa ukishamweka mgonjwa hapa unakuja hapa ile mashine na hapa nitakuwa nimesha select dose ya mionzi ambayo tunatumia kufanya x-ray. Na kwa kawaida mama hata awe na titi kubwa namna gani tunatumia mionzi tunaita KV 25 ambayo ni kiasi kidogo hakiwezi kumwaffect mama yule. Ni kiasi kidogo kilinganisha na kama unafanya labda x-ray ya kifua au ya mkono au ya mguu. Kwa hiyo utafika hapa alafu uta expose picha itatoka kule na utakuwa umeweka kifaa hiki ambacho kinaitwa cassette hiki ndo kitakuwa hapa alafu picha ile ya x-ray ambayo unapiga mionzi itatoka huku itapita kwenye ziwa la mama itaingia kwenye hii cassette sasa hii cassette tutaenda kuipitisha kwenye kompyuta ile image ya, ya titi la mama ambayo ndio mfano wake huu hapa itatokea tutapata picha kama hii ambayo tayari unaona inaonyesha picha ya ziwa ita picha ya ziwa ambayo tumepiga hii akiwa amesimama na hii ambayo ampiga kwa upande. Sasa hii picha ndio radiologist ataiangalia, ataangalia kama kuna tatizo lolote, kama kuna uvimbe wowote na kama ni kansa au sio kansa, daktari ambaye ni amespecialize na ku atafanya kazi hiyo.